Welcome. The subject of this video is using the TIP120 and TIP125 complementary high power Darlington transistors with microcontrollers such as Arduino and PIC and PICAX and etc. I am your host Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com for more circuit ideas and, pro and schematics and projects that you can assemble. Let's take a brief look at the limitations and problems we face with a typical microcontroller. In this case, an Arduino. Notice that we have a negative common and a VCC of 5 volts. Um, this limits the kind of output voltage we can used to drive other circuits and, it, and an additional problem is the I.O. current of each of the pins is limited to 20 milliamps. It is simply impossible to drive a 12 volt uh, motor for instance without destroying the microcontroller. Now you can drive some LEDs or, some, or other transistors but not actual high powered devices above 5 volts. Here's a uh, picture when you have to consider that we are, because of the Arduino's limitations of a negative common, this is how we would have to connect the TIP125 over on the left and the TIP120 on the right in an electrical circuit. Remember, transistors are three pin devices with an emitter, a base, and a collector. On your left, the TIP125 has to, is connected, its emitter is connected to plus VCC, but you notice the TIP120, its emitter is connected to ground. This is because the two parts have electrically opposite um, doping in their semiconductor material. That's why one is a PNP, that's positive, negative, positive, versus an NPN, which is a negative, positive, negative. Note how we have to hook these up and look at this here. On the case of the left, this is how we would have to hook up. This would be the sync configuration. This is how we would have to hook up an NPN. The sync configuration is the TIP120. That is, the transistor is in the ground side of the circuit. If you look at the, here's your ground, here is your switch, and we are using these as switches. Your load in this case is an LED, and that ties the VCC. And remember, in this series here, we are using um, electron flow from negative to positive, as pointed out by these arrows. Now, if you look on your right, this is the source configuration. That is, the switch is in the VCC side of the circuit. If you look over here at, on the left with the TIP125, it is between VCC, that's the 12 volts, and the motor. To reiterate again, source is where the switch is placed in the VCC side, such as here, versus sync, where this uh, switch is placed in the ground side such as with the TIP120. This is how we're going to have to be able to hook them up to other circuits and drive them with the Arduino. A Darlington transistor's main characteristic is it produces a huge current gain with very small current input. Okay, each trans, a conventional transistor, you can build a uh, Darlington transistor out of two regular transistors. In this case, the, the little bit of current going to Q2 is multiplied by a factor known as HFE, and that multiplied current is fed into the base of Q1. In other words, to get the total, set, uh, let's say for instance Q1 added eight, down here had an HFE of 20 and Q2 had 100, 
the total HFE, and this is DC current gain, would be 20 times 100 or 2,000. How much current would we need for uh, to be supplied by the Arduino? Oh, say you had 1 amp and you divide it by 2,000, it would be 500 microamps. That's well super below um, what the uh, Arduino or other microcontroller can supply. Let's look at a couple of other things first. If I was to connect a voltmeter down here to the common and measure here at the base of Q1, I would read 0.6 volts. That's because I have uh, that's because a forward bias semiconductor junction that is base to emitter is going to read 0.6 volts. Well, guess what? If I go up here, it's 1.2 because I have two of them in series. So this is your basic Darlington configuration. You have one transistor boosting the current and feeding the ba base of a second transistor. And you will note that we have, for instance, the current from the collector emitter is known as IC, and that's the same thing as the motor current or the load current. The TIP120 and 125 are known as complementary pairs. They have the same electrical characteristics, but opposite electrical properties. Here is some stuff I lifted from their spec sheets. On your left is a TIP120 which consists of a little more than just two Darlington transistors. It includes two built-in resistors to stabilize and speed up switching. It also has this built-in transient suppressor diode for switching magnetic loads. Notice the arrows on the transistors. These are NPNs because the arrow is not pointing to current flow, it's pointing to the N type material in the transistor. In the case of a NPN, negative, positive, negative, it's pointing to the negative material. Look over here on your right at your 125. Same, why it's a complementary pair, because it has the same voltage and current characteristics of its NPN twin sister, same resistors, exactly, but you notice the polarity of the suppressor diode is swapped. And you also notice that the arrows are pointing in. These are PNP transistor. Positive, negative, positive semiconductor material. The arrow points towards the negative material. The typical gain of these transistors, as it says here, is 1,000. That is, if I put in 1 milliamp, I will get a between the base and emitter, that's zero, zero, 001 amp, I will get a current flow from emitter to collector of 1 amp. So that's a, that is a big boost in current and is quite useful for driving a number of things, be it LEDs or motors or you name it. Here is a typical circuit now using the uh, TIP120. It is connected in the sync configuration. Here's your battery, there's your positive side. Goes to the motor and the switch, the TIP120 switch, is in the ground side of the load. So that's why it's a sync. And here is your, and it's through a 2.2K resistor is plenty good enough to use with an Arduino. I'm not even going to calculate base current. If this is at 1 amp, then I have a base current of uh, then I have a base current of uh, 1 milliamp. But at 2.2K, I should have an IB of something like uh, 1.7 milliamps. The reason I want the extra current is to make sure that the transistor switches fully on. But I don't want to dump so much current 
into the base emitter that I damaged the device. So you have to choose a value that gives you more than enough current to switch it on but not exceed the current rating of the base emitter junction. For most microcontrollers I use 2.2K or you can use 1K. Either one works just fine. Alright, here is the TIP125. Like it was connected before, the emitter is connected to VCC and you'll have 1.2 volts drop between these two semiconductors junctions in the uh, emitter base. And at the base here, if I was measured between ground and the base, I would have 10.8 volts. This creates an immediate problem with connecting to a microcontroller, even through a resistor. If I was to allow this 10 volts to get into an Arduino I.O. pin, I would blow the pin. I would exceed the 5 volts that it's supposed to supply. So what I'm using is an NPN transistor switch that I covered in another video. But it's very simple. The current going into the uh, Q2, in this case it's a 2N2222, um, switches this on and drops the current. It protects the uh, microcontroller from the excessive voltage on the base of the TIP125 and switches it to ground. If you go back, the TIP, the uh, Q2 here, does the same thing as this switch here, SW1. I'm using a solid state SW1 instead of a push button switch. And there's not much to this. Uh, say I have a I'm a uh, motor current of 3 amps. Well, okay, it's obvious a TIP-125 can handle 3 amps. No problem. Okay, here's another variation of a circuit. What if I had a motor that required 10 amps? The TIP-120 cannot possibly handle this. Won't work. I could use it, though, to drive an MJ 2955. This is a complementary transistor to the popular 2N3055. It's some, I'm using this high power, if I didn't have this high power tran, I'm using the high powered TIP20 because to drive this transistor to do 10 amps takes a lot of current, at least 500 milliamps. That's, that can be figured out since the uh, HFE of Q2, the MJ2959, is 20. Divide 10 by 20, that's 500 milliamps. But if I go ahead and use a TIP120, I get all the gain I need. And I'm still putting in, oh, I don't know, I can make R1 1,000 ohms or 2,200 ohms, and it works just fine. This is a cheap forward way to get uh, a driver for a high-powered PNP high side switch. The value of R2, well, you're going to have to drop uh, about 23 volts across R2. Down here, divide 23 by 500 milliamps. You're going to need 40. You're going to need a 46 ohm resistor. You can go with a depends on what's available out there a 28 ohm or a uh, a 28 ohm will probably work you don't want to go higher than 46 because then you won't allow you won't supply enough current to drive the motor again I am simply doing with the TIP 122 I mean the 120 switch down here what I'm doing here with SW1. So you could use a high power Darlington to drive even a higher, much higher powered PNP transistor. Okay, let's look at another. Okay, a lot. This is another Darlington transistor, the MJ1005. 
It has. It is a 20 amp NPN power Darlington. It's rated at 400 volts at 175 watts. This is the internal circuitry inside the uh, tran inside of the transistor. What's it? this is the case. Again, you notice I got some internal resistors, some speed up diodes, and I also have another transient suppressor diode. This transistor is for high speed switching, generally of magnetic loads like motors, relays, or contactors. Here in this case, I'm using a um, I'm using an ex an extra transistor once again to drive it's, it takes a I'm using this transistor here to drive the uh, Q1 to provide some extra boost in game be careful that this be careful this is 200 volts and so I'm going to have high voltage here on both of these collectors and down here I can apply and let's see Q2 is an MJE 13007 it's rated at 8 amps 400 volts um, with an HFE of 50 and of course I have an MJE the 1005 is rated at 20 amps um, the reason that I went with the extra driver transistor is because um, it has a fairly low HFE of 50. Well, both of them having an HFE of 50 gives me a total HFE of 2500. So I need very little current. I only need about oh, 6 to 10 milliamps from the I.O. port of an Arduino to drive this high voltage, high current circuit. Well, if you want to know what this is, if you want to take the uh, 200 volts times the 15 amps, this is a 3,000 watt circuit, and I'm driving it with about 6 milliamps. Not bad. Even though I would hope you would not be driving this kind of stuff with a microcontroller, you're going to run into this in industry, and this is how we do it. Okay, and that's a that's the end of this video. It was an introduction to how to use the TIP120 and 125 and of course other type power Darlington switching transistors. As we continue in this series we're going to take these concepts that we have learned and apply them to building H-Bridge motor controllers. I'm your host Lewis Laughlin. Thanks for listening.